Welcome to the city of Porto, Portugal. I can already tell that we are absolutely going to love it here. We're staying in the Ribeira district, which is right next to the river here and has a lot of cool historical areas. Over the next two days, we're gonna be exploring just some of the highlights of the central area here. And we're super excited because we've heard amazing things about this city. Today is really just about exploring the city and there are so many amazing windy little roads uphill, a little out of breath, tiled buildings everywhere. It's definitely the historical center. It's so pretty here. I already am in love with Porto, but maybe not in love with the birds because they keep scaring the crap out of me. <laughs> no, I do not like birds. Oh my God. <laughs> This is certainly an area where it seems like you could easily get lost. <laughs> Even though I know the general direction where we're going, which is usually enough for me having to frequently reference Google Maps because there's just so many small windy streets. I think it kind of hits the wanderlust definition people think of when they think of travel here. Just getting lost in the streets, wandering around. absolutely love the rooftop landscape, cityscape that's created by the buildings here with the hills. You can see all of the church spires in different places, even some government buildings. And then you have those terracotta roofs on top too, and everything sort of staggers above each other. And even though we're right in the heart of the city, I think the sound is muted a little bit because of the narrow streets and the tall buildings. So it's a lot quieter of an atmosphere as well. We have sort of a loose plan of what we're looking to tackle on our half day this afternoon. We already got distracted by these little tile signs that are pointing us to a viewpoint. We're gonna go see what it is. We are certainly getting our workout in today. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> First official stop for us is here at the Porto Cathedral. It always seems like the churches have the beautiful plazas and viewpoints and it's where everyone kind of gathers and hangs out and this one does not disappoint. You can hear they have some live music going and the view over the entire city is absolutely fantastic. This would be a great place to catch sunset but we're going to keep moving on to explore some more. Walking through the streets you almost forget that you're actually by the coast and then I think the seagulls are a quick reminder but they do give it kind of like that Mediterranean vibe which is really nice and it just feels like one of those coastal towns with the seagulls flying over the city and the big hills and then the water views. One of the things that defines the skyline here in Porto is this double-decker iron bridge. Uh, which we're crossing now on the top side it was really interesting that the metro runs on it and people were just flooding the middle but i'm guessing they're pretty active in the navigation of that because they cleared things out i fully expected this to not be working train tracks because everyone's just walking across the bridge and all of a sudden a train comes out and it's like honking its horn at everyone <laughs> i'm maybe a little nervous <laughs> Since it's built on a hill, pretty much every marker here in Porto is also a viewpoint. I know you're getting a lot of sun behind me, but I'll show off some of the highlights here too. We saw these in Lisbon too, but if hills aren't your thing, you do have the tuk-tuk option everywhere, and they're widely taken advantage of, and they're at all of the tourist spots. So you can save your legs every so often, or you can take a tuk-tuk tour around the entire city. Weirdly jet skis on this river, which just feels so out of place because it's so picturesque. And then all of a sudden you have the <laughs> jet ski coming through the middle. But I mean, to each his own, I guess if you want to do it, why not? It's a pretty cool place to have a jet ski. All that down just to go straight back up. That was a good one. Would you describe that as a good one? Tough walk, hope the wine's worth it. One of the things that Porto is known for is port. 
So we are going to check out some local sellers here. Our first stop is here at Taylor's Wine Cellar. We are not opting for a full flight. We're just taking a couple of glasses. So we're gonna go to a few cellars here, but port is fortified wine, so it's a lot stronger than typical wine. So we only got two glasses to share amongst ourselves and we'll see how it goes from there. Thank you. Oh, that is nice. It's nice. It's smooth. There's a fruity taste of it. <laughs> we don't know what we don't to say. It. I don't know. I've been told that this is like an alcohol bouquet. <laughs> it. it smells like caramel. It smells like, um, oh, it reminds me of like a cake that, like a rum cake. And it tastes like it too. <laughs> On to the next one? On to the next. tell us the number of barrels. Okay. A barrel of port wine will be 550 liters, which means that 10 of those barrels, number 10 right there, that's 5,500 liters. Just around the corner is our final stop of the evening at the Coxburn, at the Cockburn's cellar. <laughs> <laughs> this group is so immature. <laughs> We're gonna try a few more wines before we close out for the night. This is our final morning here in Porto. And also in Portugal, unfortunately, but that does leave us another half day or so to try and catch anything that we missed here in this beautiful city. So we're gonna start off here in the Mercado de Bolhao and work our way back down to the river. I don't know this by now, an obvious first stop is for some coffee. Usually pastries, but we're gonna keep walking and see what else we see. Anytime we visit a new city, we always make an intentional effort to seek out one of the local markets. It's always just really interesting to see the variety of stuff that they offer, and I think one thing that we've noted is, especially internationally, they just take such pride in the products they offer. I mean, look at the color of the fruit and the flowers and just how good everything looks, too. Uh, it's always tasty, so I, I don't think we've ever left one of these empty-handed. <laughs> now we're doing just a little bit of an architectural walk, looking at some of the cool buildings that they have here. Honestly, we just saw this one last night, thought we would come back. This is a municipal building, but look how fantastic they make it look. We are walking by the famous library slash bookstore here in Porto and it looks beautiful on the inside but you do have to pay to get in, it's like five or six euros. You can use that to buy a book once you're inside. There's also a line so we're not going to go in but we did look at it from the outside and it's really pretty. So if you're into books or libraries or bookstores, it's worth considering. wandering around Porto without any real agenda, walking up and down the narrow alleys and streets is such a cool experience because we don't have this back in the States and there's all of the really cool tiled buildings and just different architecture and arches and windows. You could spend a day wandering here. In fact, <laughs> that's what we're doing today. <laughs> We've arrived now at the Gardens of the Crystal Palace. I wouldn't describe the palace itself necessarily as particularly crystal-y, but the gardens themselves are quite amazing. The flowers are just really blooming right now, and I think the climate of the area just allows for lots of different things to grow that we could never grow in Texas, unfortunately, because this would be like the dream backyard, dream garden area here. There's so many birds here. This is like a little bird parade. <laughs> There's roosters and chickens and geese and ducks and peacocks. <laughs> For lunch, we came to Gazella, which is Anthony Bourdain approved because there's a picture of him on the wall. <laughs> We're trying another one of the Porto specialties the cacciorino, which is a hot dog, basically, with bread, so here goes nothing. Bread cheese hot dog. I think it's like more of a sausage than a hot dog, but 
pretty good. We also got a classic sandwich, a prego, which is a steak, ham, and cheese. We've actually had it a couple times on this trip already. I do like that this place is very local feel to it. It's actually a cerveceria, which is like a bar, uh, basically. And so it's kind of like this diner bar feel. Really nice spot. That's fun. They even have a little map where you can pin where you're from, which is, you can barely squeeze it on there, but I like the tradition. <laughs> it's amazing the difference that the day makes. We're walking across the infamous Iron Bridge again here, and now that we're on a weekday, there's nobody here, at least in comparison. Super quiet. It's middle of the afternoon. Not only is this the end of our time in Porto, but unfortunately we recorded our outro here in slow motion. <laughs> this does wrap up our Portugal trip also, but obviously there's still a lot left to explore in this country, so we will be back. If you missed any of our other Portugal videos, be sure to go check those out. And as always, like, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.